It's the next level. Hey Carly. Aren't you tired of fighting for the wrong side, Mr. Barnes? <laughs> I've done this before, kid. I know how it ends. It doesn't matter if I don't survive this. I'm fighting for something bigger than myself. And with all the bodies you've collected, have you ever been able to say the same? You don't think I ever fought for something bigger than myself? That's all I ever tried to do. And I fell twice. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a foiler spool. <laughs> a foiler spool. Yeah, it's going to be a foiler a spool. A spool foil. A spool foil. <laughs> no, no, it's going to be a spoiler full podcast about the sixth episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the finale. Yeah. Tongue tied. Yeah, I am. Okay. Well, with that, we'll move right into this. And yeah, we're covering the Falcon and the Winter Soldier mm -hmm. season one, episode six. One world, one people. And the synopsis for this particular episode is Sam Wilson, a.k.a. the Falcon, and Bucky Barnes, a.k.a. the Winter Soldier, team up on a global adventure. That's like a synopsis of the whole, all the whole, six episodes, the whole thing. It's the whole like, season. That's not, that's not just the episode. It's like somebody just threw something in there. They went, ah, uh, let's just throw something in there. It doesn't matter. People don't read our synopsis anyway, you know? <laughs> well, actually, that was on the Disney Plus episode when you boot it up and you look at the synopsis. Yeah, it was. I yeah. That's and crazy. I thought it was hilarious when I saw that. And I'm it like, is. are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was hilarious. So we'll be covering this particular episode and uh your initial thoughts, Steve. I loved it. I thought it was I thought it was a great finale. Um I can't wait. You know, I hope they get another season, and I hope the next season is Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Uh, just like we saw at the end there, the 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 title card was not the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It was Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. So I thought that was really, really cool. And uh, I was just, I was all smiles and giggles after the first watch. And I had, you know, I had to wait a day because I had to let my excitement calm down because it was so good. <laughs> yeah, I thought this finale was really, really awesome. I really enjoyed it. The action really captivated me. I love the whole plot twists that we got. And it actually gave, it put tears to my eyes at the end with Isaiah Bradley and that whole scene. And, you know, and it amazed me too with John Walker and of a twist of fate where he changes his tune. Mm -hmm. He's no crazy pants. <laughs> yeah, he got, you know, he, he gets a little bit of redemption there. And, and we yeah. may talk about that in our points. We'll see if uh, if that's really enough and what kind of uh, uh, U.S. agent, what kind of character he's going to be. Yeah, he does actually take up that mantle now that we um, have been speculating. And, you know, from the comic books, there is he ter does turn into U.S. agent America, as it were. No, uh, you no know, America on his uh, uniform. It's all black with the the stripes, just reminiscent of the true Tom, uh, the true comic portrayal of the the character, okay. which is really good. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah. So with that, we'll go right into our top fives. Mercy bears richer fruit than strict justice. It's a great app. Uh, so my number five, or my first point, is kind of just the whole Carly's plan and our hero's plan there at the beginning. It was very, like, I was confused the first time, and the second time I watched it, I was even like, this, what, what are they, they, like, they both failed, basically, in what they yeah. were trying to do. Like, <laughs> like, Carly's like, we're going to take these hostages, and we're going to negotiate with them, and then she ends up, you know, they lose the helicopter hostages, she loses one van full of hostages, and so she only got one van left, and so she drives it over the bridge or whatever to try to kill them, and it was just, the whole thing was very confusing, I mean, it was great <laughs> action, it was very action-packed, it was really great Yeah, seeing all the different setups, you know, and like, I think Sharon was the only one that actually, you know, achieved her goal, but she only had one guy to take out, 
you know? Yeah. So, uh, well, two, actually. Oh, was it two? Okay, whatever. I mean, she's like the only one that actually accomplished her, what she was, but she didn't have a really big thing to do. She just had to stop those guys in the van. That was it. Oh, yeah, you know? she had a big thing. She had to reveal that she was the power broker. Well, no, I mean, I mean, as far as the plan goes, not not the whole show. I'm talking about the 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 the. the it just was so confusing to me. Yeah. They throw out in dialogue what they're going to do, and then they don't really accomplish any of it. And it just was, it was it was kind of funny at the same time. At the same time, it was kind of tragic that they just they didn't really have a plan and they didn't work. Eh, a lot of it had to do with the writing because this was after I guess the lockdowns and COVID and everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm sure a lot was lost within various screenplays. So they figured, all right, let's move along and end the the season or this uh, special feature, as it were. Because yeah. if, you, like you're saying, if they go instead of saying it's uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, they say Captain America and Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. then it's going to be a new show completely. Exactly, exactly. So, but so it'll be yeah, interesting to see the future what, what what it goes forward with. Same here. Well, my number five was, well, obviously, I said it before, I love the action within the whole beginning of the episode. That was amazing. You know, we get Falcon's new suit. We didn't have to wait for it. We, we get it right away. And, you know, definitely Vibranium and having a new Red Wing really mm-hmm. added to that and the way he was able to accomplish things and the way he was able to work with the lady in the helicopter after getting the info that she is a pilot through Red Wing. With that, I just had to suspend my disbelief about the flat spin that you pulled them out of. <laughs> yeah, it was a little, it was, you know, yeah, suspended just, this was my number four also, was just the, the whole helicopter rescue thing. Mm. And I, I totally agree with you. It was, it was great that Red Wing is able to, to serve, you know, and they just happen to have a person on there who's able to fly a helicopter. Not only is she able to fly a helicopter, she's skilled enough. That, like you said, she kind of pulls them out of that flat spin when it's yep. when it's almost hitting the water, and a little, you know, suspend your disbelief a little bit, I guess, because these were all like political people and senators, and you know, I call them the congressmen. Yeah, <laughs> congressmen, and, and they're all. It just happens to one of them happens to be a helicopter pilot as well. It's a little bit, but it was still really cool. It was, you know, the way, and she's just got that little smile when she grabs the controls and brings it out. That was really cool. She puts the headset on, yeah. you know. Uh, but yeah, it is a little bit uh, suspend your uh, disbelief on it. <laughs> uh, so that was my number four as well. So what's your number four? Well, that would be finding out that Sharon was the power broker. So uh, I guess I called it. Mm. <laughs> then you know, but then she kills Batrock because Batrock, you know, is like, "Well, I'll just expose you," and boom, dead. <laughs> yeah i didn't that whole scene was a little confusing to me that carly shoots her she sh- shoots bat rock mm-hmm. you know and then eventually she ends up shooting carly but uh it was a little quick it was, it was very fast the way yeah that, that was a that was a fast scene within that just mm-hmm. to get them both gone I, I guess they just wanted to move the story along i don't know if it had to do with like however long because the episode was like maybe what 48 minutes or something yeah, like that. it was it was a normal you know regular time that they've been, but it 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 had it was it was funny because I was going to put this as one of my notes was uh it had it seemed like it had like three endings like there were three times that they could have ended it yes you know and and then they went and did something else you know so so it was it was a little choppy there uh, but I liked it and uh, it sounded uh, it looked to me like they wanted to do a couple of mid credit scenes, so they decided to end it on the Isaiah Bradley thing and they only mm-hmm. left us that one. Yeah, that yeah, they gave us the, the power broker. And that's I had that this is my number three as well, was was Sharon Carter and the reveal of her being the power broker and all. Um but I thought it was it was kind of maybe fortuitous for her because really of all the people that were left, Carly was the only one who could have uh Exposed you know, her. Exposed her, you know, so yeah. it was kind of fortuitous for her that she killed Carly as as well, you know. Mm. And still, and then she gets her job back and we have that little, we have that, that mid credit scene, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that explains that she's going to get back into U.S. intelligence. She's on the phone with, I'm assuming she's on the phone with her assistant, you know, saying, hey, line up our buyers. We've got, we've got some more. So it's, it's, I, I, I commented this on TV podcast industries, my voicemail that I sent them, that it's going to be an interesting turn, I think, for Emily Van Camp, because of course she's been, you know, the, the character has been a good guy mm-hmm. every time she's been portrayed on screen. And so now the future portrayals of her on screen are going to be, you know, unless it's like a multiverse kind of thing and somebody else is, is her, but you know, 
it's going to be interesting to see going forward her portrayal on screen as this kind of power broker, double agent kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Cause that was a twist compared, mm -hmm. you know, compared to what they do in the comics with her, that's taking the character out of complete context of that, but it gives us something different than the comics. At least it, it's mm -hmm. a, a new character, a new structure. Is she bad? Is she good? Is she like, uh, in, instead of a hero, she's an anti-hero cause she's all out for herself. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's like I said, it's, it's it's exciting to see where, like you said, where it kind of goes. And, uh, you know, we were both kind of last last episode, we were both talking about it, how, you know, it'd be on one hand, they're really pointing the finger that she's the power broker. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, they could twist it and make her not be the power broker. But I, I was really glad. I think I finally settled on being glad that we were all correct in the, the, the point. Because like, I've been saying from the beginning, I was like, could she be the power broker? You know, and you and you as well. From the from the very beginning, we've been like, she really has a lot of stuff. She's got satellites. She's got money. She's got yeah, you know, networks and connections. And so, you know, that reveal that she was using the super soldiers as kind of her, you know, her foot soldiers and and that kind of stuff. And they broke away to be the flag smashers. Hmm. Um, you, you know, so it does it. It is kind of unclear. I think uh, it was either you or TV podcast you guys were talking about the fact that, you know, why was the power broker threatening to kill them? You know, if they were working for her, but they weren't, they had really broken off from working for her. So, you know, in this episode, she says, you can come back and work for me again. And Carly's like, no, I'm not going to do that. So. Hmm. My number three. Yeah, I think that's where we're at. Yeah. Well, I loved the action scenes with Sam and his use of the shield while he's mm -hmm. flying. That was amazing. Very, very depiction, true to depiction of what they did in the comics, which is really cool. And you got to give him credit where credit's due because he has no super soldier serum in him. Mm -hmm. And he's just a black man in a red, white, and blue suit. Like he yeah. says during that little <laughs> speech he gives, which is great. And I love that speech too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And that was that was my next one was was just that whole speech that Sam gives where the, the senator is trying to tell him, well, you just don't understand all the, the ins and outs and all the things that the working parts here. And Sam's like, no, I understand you have power and you need to use it and you need to use it. Well, <laughs> you know, he's like, yeah, li you literally, you have great power. With great power comes great responsibility. Use it. <laughs> yeah. He's like he's like, you guys can do this. You can feed all these people. You can, you know work together and just do it just quit talking about it quite quit talking about the obstacles mm. and start doing it you know yeah, so I, thought, I thought that was really cool especially when the senator says you know well you have all these people blipping back and they're coming into houses where people have taken over where they relocated or settled into their houses mm -hmm. that are refugees or thugs or whatever and how are we going to take care of them are they homeless now too so it, it kind of seemed one-sided, and mm -hmm. I love how Sam pushes out, and that's my number two as well, is Sam's speech. It, I think it is one of my favorite speeches in the MCU, uh, as even including like the uh, cinematic universe of what he had to say, and was so eloquent, so straightforward, and it really hit hard and hit home, because it... it talked about discrimination especially how he talked about he's being looked at and how he'll be hated because he's a black man wearing red white and blue donning the captain america shield and doing what what sam did he doesn't have blonde hair blue eyes or white skin he is just a man doing the same thing that steve did and he just doesn't care at that point so people are gonna have to basically eat it up and smile <laughs> and deal with it you know my feeling is you know good I, I i wanted this for so long and i was so glad because the build-up was so great yeah oh yeah the, the arc of the of, of seeing just seeing how he takes it and especially when he's, he's able to get isaiah bradley to kind of change his his tune on it because remember isaiah told him don't do it they'll never let you be captain yeah America. and it wasn't but it wasn't what i thought was really cool and there, there is a comment one of the reporters made some comment about did the government let you be captain, captain America. America or something yeah. like that and he doesn't even respond because it was and you know in response to isaiah bradley it wasn't the government choosing him it was sam taking choosing. up the mantle that was given him 
by yes. the former, you know, Captain America. And him taking that up is so important and doing it is is just a huge thing. It's gonna be cool. Um again, if if they do make another Captain America movie that stars um Anthony Mackie, I think that would be amazing. That would be awesome. And there is talks of another Captain America movie coming out too, by the way. Mm-hmm. So that's I didn't put that in the news, but I forgot to put it in there. <laughs> well, you know, I saw that headline and I didn't I this week earlier, but I didn't get a chance to research it to make sure it wasn't just people talking about it to talk. About yeah, because sometimes it could be fake news, too. Mm-hmm. But I, I think with the response of Falcon and the Winter Soldier and how it's been, I think they're going to go through with it. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll have another show like Captain mm-hmm. and Falcon, uh, Captain <laughs> and Winter Soldier. <laughs> Uh, so where are we at? We jumped number one. around. You're number one. Uh, my number one is we already started talking about just the new Captain America. I was I was so glad, like you said, that that they didn't make us wait until like the middle of the episode or something. It was we get it right away. Yeah. You know, you, Carly looks up and she sees Sam fly to the building and she goes, "Okay, he's here. Do it now." And we get that him standing in that broken window and he's got the he's got the stars and stripes on his chest. He's got the the shield on his back. He's got the red, white, and blue wings. It's just so. Everything is just oh, it was just amazing to see that, and I thought it was really. And that's the the guy. It's in my note, my uh, my quotes, where the guy says, "Who are you?" And he says, "I'm Captain America." And the guy says, "I thought Captain America was on the moon." <laughs> you <know>? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah, my number one would be Isaiah Bradley being brought to the Smithsonian Institute mm-hmm. to the Captain America Museum by Sam, and to find the wing in there based upon his story and a statue mm-hmm. of him and explaining to the world that he was there and he was like another Captain America to mm-hmm. the people and what yeah. he did for his country. It, that had me tearing up. That that showed a lot of respect and I think it changed Isaiah's thoughts. I just love what he had to say to Sam though and he goes, so you're doing it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, you're no Martin, you know. <laughs> Malcolm. You know Malcolm, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know Mandela. <laughs> you know Mandela <laughs> <That's right>. exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Very so. cool. Uh, so that was was that your number one? Was Isaiah Bradley? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got some notes. Um, <laughs> you know, we talked about it last week that uh, Walker's shield was not going to last very long, and it did. <laughs> it got kind of banged up pretty quick, uh, and finally tossed aside. Yeah, he got tin foil for a shield. <laughs> I'm hoping they give him something new, like a shield like that. Hopefully it's not va- vibranium with the, uh, hopefully with the incorporation of the mutant aspect, eventually within the movies, they give John Walker, like, maybe an adamantium shield. Mm. You know, because eventually that's what happened in the comics. It, it, it was an adamantium shield that mm. Cap had, and in the very beginning it was vibranium, but then they changed it to adamantium. One of my notes is the tools that Sharon uses within the episode. I just found them interesting. The mask yeah. that changes her face when she approaches Bucky. And then she uses that mercury vapor to mm-hmm. just burn that guy in the yeah. car. That's the that's the other two. Okay. You just answered my question. Okay. <laughs> that I'll, I'll get to when we get down in my notes. Well, it, it, I'll do my note on this right now. Because I, I lost count and I, I about the super soldiers. Because we started out, there were eight of them. Mm-hmm. Right. And then Nico was killed by Walker. Carly was killed by Sharon. Four were blown up in the truck. And that's only six and at least two more. And I just realized you just answered my question. Those other two were the guys in the van. Yes. That Sharon that Sharon killed. So they're all they're all dead. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's <laughs> I was so like I I don't know how I skipped over the fact that those two guys were part of the eight uh as well. So that that now totally makes sense and that I understand why she did it and uh that that's uh much more clear to me now. Yeah. I love that Bucky got his superhero landing. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, what's an- another one of mine is you were talking about tearing up on the second watch. I teared up when Falcon comes on the scene there. And that one old guy says, that's the black Falcon. And the other guy says, nah, that's, that's Captain, Captain America. America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought that was so just, just spot on. That there are going to be people who are going to accept it. There's still going to be some people who are not. Yeah. And he's going to have to deal with that. But uh, there's definitely going to be people who, especially after that speech and everything else, they're going to be like, that's that's Captain America. That's the Captain America we should have had. For yeah, me. it's really eye-opening for some people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next one for me, 
would be uh i just love the car scene as well you know the truck where it's stuck up on top of the building with all the hostages Mm -hmm. but sam with no super soldier serum in him at all is able to push that car up with leverage and help of his new suit and jetpacks yeah i thought that was really cool you could see the pain on him, and but you could see Bucky looking down below. Even John Walker is looking up, going, mm-hmm. "Wow!" And Bucky had a smile on his face too. Yeah. Um. So my last one is just we already kind of talked about it a little bit, but we didn't mention her. Was uh, was Val there at the end and giving John Walker the U.S. agent uh, name? And John Walker, you know, I'm back, I'm back, and and Val's like, it's almost worked out as if I as if I planned it, but I didn't, or did I? Did I? <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly right. She's she's so perfect, and I don't even know the character from the comic books. It's just that's a wonderful character for her to play, and I can't wait to see more of her. Same here, and that was my other point too. You know, it's like, but you know, we already talked about it. It's him redeeming himself, John Walker. Mm-hmm. So there was still slight tick to him though when he did that. He had that like a head shake at one point where he looked kind of off. <laughs> yeah, but the fact that you know Val tells him, it's like remember to keep your phone on. Answer when I call. When answer the call, and all I can think of is, can anyone say thunderbolts? We're gonna see this guy come back, and I really think Val is involved with uh, General Ross within this like little group that he's creating. And I wouldn't be surprised that we get more hints because I think what we're we're seeing now is he already has Zemo in the raft, and mm-hmm. they have John Walker where he's not not literally an enemy or anything like that or somebody on the run a fugitive or a mercenary at that but he's on hold so they have him in his their back pocket there's going to be other people too and i'm curious to see who they uh, eventually grab for that group because there's going to be a movie but i don't think they're going to rush right into it they're going to slowly build up mm-hmm. a team very much similar to like suicide squad but the way marvel does it where how they built up the Avengers over the course of time with those ending credit scenes. Mm -hmm. And they're going to grab some of these characters. I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, the abomination come in because there's been talks about having him come back, but uh, we won't know until we, we see the next Marvel feature, which would be Loki in June 11th. Yeah. (laughs) Well, not feature show. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, we have a couple of quotes. I think you had you had one more note. Did you want to talk some more about uh, Sharon Carter, or have we talked all about? No, we you? talked about that. You know, okay. you already stated it. How you know how she was walking away. She answers the call. It's like we mm-hmm. don't know where she stands. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting. Like I said, I'm 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 fascinated by the, these these uh, these female characters that we're getting. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, we already did one of mine when I said uh, when Sam flies in and he says I'm Captain America, and the guy says I thought Captain America was on the moon, um, and then that whole thing where Val, when she is talking to uh, John Walker and his wife, and she says things are about to get weird, so when they do, we're not going to need a Captain America. We're going to need U.S. Agent. Yeah, and so there's the birth of U.S. Agent. Mm. First one for me would be from Sharon. This is after Sam and Bucky bring her in. And she takes off the mask, and Sam was like, thanks, Sharon, for being here, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, yeah, I hear pardons aren't all that cracked up to be anyway. And then Bucky <laughs> replies, depends on the therapist. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, they're both skeptical about therapists, I guess. Yeah. And then uh, the last one I would have would be John Walker. And he says, mercy bears richer fruit than strict justice. And that's just after they captured the the other people. And Bucky replies, Lincoln? Really? <laughs> and then Walker's like, great man, great quote. And Bucky's like, not when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So we got some feedback from our Facebook group. Yeah, we do, from Alex Baelish. And Alex said, you can say what you want about Disney, but they give the right amount of fan service in their original content. That keeps the diehards happy and bring in new viewers. What a great ending to a great series. As someone who didn't watch all a thousand (laughs) MCU movies, I know I probably missed some context while watching what the, the, you know, what, what do you say? That's what the podcast is for. But that way, but that's what the podcast is for. I loved how in the end Falcon Cap and Winter Soldier Bucky 
their relationship was so imperfectly perfect. Mm. Uh, I also love that fake cap U.S. agent got his redemption in the end. He got such a raw deal and his, and his struggling of doing the right thing and yet in the end worked with them to defeating the Flag Smashers. I hope they get to develop him more. Yeah, same here. Uh, the after credits never disappoint. What is Agent Carter up to? In the end, this shows... This shows shows? That's <laughs> that good evil versus evil is perspective and winners write the history. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, Very yeah. True. And then we got one from Eric. Eric Stipe says, uh, I think it's it, I think the finale was the best episode of the season and that in general the show impressed as it got on. It was really good to finally see Sam as Captain America. His outfit was pretty dang cool and it looks like the comic come to life. I'm sure that's what he was trying right there. Yes. <laughs> I had a I had a number of problems with this show, the Flag Masters most of all, that I just chalk up to poor writing when the antagonist isn't well set up which is my opinion my opinion here it makes the protagonist struggle against them harder to find interesting which at least was my case i think i also struggled with my expectations for the show as i was hoping to spend most of the show with sam as cap that is on me though as i guess i still haven't learned to always go in with no expectations <laughs> however the pacing ultimately made sense as I really liked where each character ultimately ended up in their arcs. And I'm excited to see where this, where each one goes next. The show also gives me things I did not know I wanted, such as Sam and Bucky fixing a fishing boat. Seriously, I could have watched six episodes of Sam and Bucky in a show called This Old Boat. <laughs> <laughs> the, the B plots were also more enjoyable to me than the main plot, such as Bucky's List, the aforementioned boat, Sharon being power broker Zemo's bit, the Isaiah story, etc. As always, I really enjoyed your guys' coverage of the show and the, and the comic background and references to that you provide. Next, I think I plan to dive into Invincible and come back here to listen to your coverage. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for that. We love we love hearing from our listeners. We love hearing uh, that what we're doing is uh, is good. And uh, I agree that the Flag Smashers there, it was a little unclear. I mean, I understood what they were trying to accomplish and, mm. and it made sense. But at the same time, there's still a little piece of me that says half the world's population was gone for five years. People got used to them being gone, mm -hmm. used to living a certain way. And then suddenly, though, the half the population are back. And yeah. so suddenly you have to deal with with that. And it would be tough, but it's something that I think, as Sam put in his speech, governments could figure it out, you know, yeah. work together. And that's because that's what they were doing during the five years. And they were all working together because they had to. Mm -hmm. And now that people are back, they should keep doing that. Yeah. And also Sam's point is don't think about yourself and what helps you think about what helps others. Yeah. You know, because they weren't in that position. They they are they have money, they have wealth, they have power, and all these other people that are coming back don't have that, don't have that opportunity. And like he said, that they basically got blipped back and their houses were taken over by these people that mm -hmm. just have moved on. And then now these people are homeless or something. And it's kind of like what the GRC was trying to do, but they just couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. But they were looking out for their own I hate saying it, wallet in the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, thanks Eric for uh sending in that feedback. And, and thank Alex you, Alex. Too. Yeah, thank you, Alex, as well. Yeah. Uh, if you want to hear Eric, you could actually go to the Walking Dead cast and he was on the last episode with Jason and they covered Fear of the Walking Dead. He's got like really deep insights on that. I would love to have Eric on talk about if he has any interest in doing something that we're covering. Yes. Give him an opportunity, get his voice heard. And you can hear Alex on his podcast, Field to Screen. So check that out too. He uh, does basically sports movies. <laughs> and they're pretty cool. So with that, we'll move right into some comic news. And first one is Amelia Clark is now part of the MCU being cast in Marvel's Secret Invasion movie. So we all know Amelia Clark. You know, she was Sarah Connor. Then she was the mother of dragons. And, <laughs> and mm -hmm. she was in Star Wars, a solo story. But mm -hmm. uh, next up would be Alfred Molina gave us some information about the next spider-man movie and how doc ock will be in the movie 
he did an interview and he just basically told him, it's like, yeah, well, he comes in just after he falls into the water in Spider-Man 2 and they just continue the story from there in a new world. Hmm. So basically we get the multiverse aspect in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it's been rumored that, you know, we're going to get Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield as well as Jamie Foxx. And there's talks about uh, Goblin too. So cool. and with that, we'll go right into podcast recommendations. Uh, for me, I just, I want to remind everybody, if you're not listening to Mark and Jamie as they cover Invincible on Panels to Pixels right here, uh, you should be getting it in your feed. I hope so. And they're doing a great job covering Invincible. And that show's got, I think, two more episodes. I think it's an eight is what I found out, not nine. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, TD Podcast Industries, we always give those guys a good shout out. They're covering some of the same shows we do. And you already mentioned The Walking Dead cast, which is covering Fear of the Walking Dead, which is... <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'll move right into YouTube recommendations. Uh, that fills right into podcast recommendations. Like I stated before, uh, the thing with two heads with Sean and Chris, and they gave us a shout out on trivia on Friday night. They did a live YouTube where they were doing trivia, where they were giving away things. I tried my hand at it for about an hour. Then I had a live watch party with uh, some friends of Steve and I on a group watch party kind of thing when we watched Falcon and Winter Soldier and watched uh, Fear of the Walking Dead, the new episode. And uh, I was actually commenting in the YouTube feed and saying, you know, I love their show and that I try to plug it as much as I can. And with that, Sean wound up saying, hey, give us your information. I don't remember it. So he, he plugged basically Panels to Pixels podcast as well as Adrenaline Cinema. And it sounded like a lot of people in the, in the feed were interested in that. So thanks, Sean and Chris, for doing that. And we'll uh, continue to plug you guys. And as we do always, you can submit your feedback uh, various ways. You can find our podcast on, on any of your podcast player of choice. Uh, you can submit your feedback at our website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. That will redirect you to our Facebook page, which is the easiest way to send us feedback through through the Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can always email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one, the two spelled out in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. We have our YouTube channel as well, which is panels to pixels podcast. Go on there, subscribe, give us a thumbs up and uh, check us out yeah. next week. Mark and Jamie will continue their coverage of the next episode of invincible. I'm not sure where, if we're going to wait for Loki, we'll do something in between. But We'll probably do something in between for fun. You and Jamie are doing a great doing a great job. So Thanks. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, and Jamie's having fun with it, too. Yeah. So, And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I could be heard right here on Panels to Pixels on the Next Level Network, as always. But you could also hear me on my other podcast, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. And there we cover action films, adventure films, and suspense films. I just uploaded earlier this week a Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger where Jerry and I covered that. You'll hear me and Ben cover Face Off, so you'll hear our views on that. And following that will be the movie Nobody. So Very cool. check out the Facebook page. You can leave your comments down below the image of the movie that we're covering. Nobody's already there. So you could just start watching and throwing your thoughts into that. Or, you know, you could just send us an email at adrenaline cinema podcast at gmail.com. And I can be heard here, of course, on panels to pixels. And I send voicemails to various other podcasts that our friends do. And you can hear me there and occasionally guesting on podcasts. Awesome. Well, that was pretty much our show, and I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.